Welcome back. In this video, we're going to begin our studies of circles, and we're going to use some of our previous knowledge and apply that to those particular studies. We do have to start with uh, a lot of definitions and new theorems, and so I'm going to get into that here today. So, by definition, a circle is the set of points in a plane that are a given distance from a given point or from a fixed point. Okay, and that fixed point is the center. So here we have a circle P. Circles are always named by their center. So this red dot P is the center of the circle. And the set of points that are equidistant away are all these points that make up the circle. Of course, that given distance is our radius because all radii of a circle are the same. So that distance is the same. So all these points make up the circle. And we have interior points of a circle. So my red points are inside and my black points, we have all these points outside the circle. And then the points that make up the circle are the points that are on the circle. Concentric circles. Concentric circles are circles in which have the same center. Think of dartboard. Okay, with the larger circles as you proceed outward. Well, those are concentric circles, circles that have the same center. So the red circle is circle P, but so is the purple circle. They just have different radii. Okay, the radius of circle, the purple circle is larger than the radius of the red circle. So all circles are similar. They have the same shape, but they don't have the same size. Okay, um, so congruent circles are circles with congruent radii. So if the radii aren't the same, then the circles are similar, but they're not congruent. So congruent circles are circles with the same radius or the same length. A chord of a circle, a chord is a segment joining any two points on the circle. So you can see our diagram here on the right hand side. We have this circle. I haven't labeled it. Uh, we'll call it circle O. And we have some chords. AB is a chord. It's connecting points A and point B on the circle. So it is a chord. And PX is also a chord. Well, so is PQ. PQ is a chord of this circle. It's just a special chord. It's a diameter. It's a chord that passes through the center of the circle. And then we have some formulas for circles, which you've seen before. The area of a circle is pi times its radius squared, and circumference is diameter times pi. In our class, we're going to keep everything our answer is in terms of pi, so if we had a radius, say, of 5, if OP was 5, our area then would be 5 squared times pi, or we would say it's 25 pi units squared. Our circumference, well, our circumference is diameter times pi. Diameter is twice the radius. So you could say circumference is 2 pi r, if you wish, or 2 times radius times pi. In this case, we have 2 times 5 times pi, or 10 pi. So don't mistake that as 25. That's 2 times 5. So we have 10 pi units. Circumference is not unit squared. It's a linear measurement. It's a length. It's the distance around the outside of the circle, the circumference. Area, that's how much we can fill in on the inside. <clears throat> Couple new theorems here in this chapter. One of our theorems, our first theorem says that if a radius is perpendicular to a chord, then it bisects a chord. So we might be given something like this where we have a circle P and we are given that PQ is perpendicular to XY, 
Now, PQ really isn't a radius, but if we extended it to, like, uh, PZ, then it would be, because it passes through the center here. So PQ, for lack of a better term right now, we're going to consider that our radius. PQ is perpendicular to XY. Well, the logical conclusion based on this, then, is XQ is congruent to YQ. So... If a radius is perpendicular to a chord, then it bisects a chord. This is an example here of a theorem that is reversible. The converse of this particular theorem is true. If we're given a circle and then we're given that XQ is congruent to XY and QP passes through the center, then we can say PQ is perpendicular to XY. That is, if a radius bisects a chord, then it is perpendicular to the chord. So those two go hand in hand. Uh, they're converses of each other. And then finally, the perpendicular bisector of a must pass through the center of the circle. So if we have a circle here, I give you a circle. That's a circle. If we're going to be, have the perpendicular bisector of the chord, it's got to go through the center of the circle. There's all sorts of things that are perpendicular. There are all sorts of segments that could be bisectors. Okay, but the perpendicular bisector has to go through the center of the circle. And that is consistent with what we have seen here in our previous problems. So let's take a look at a sample problem. We're given our circle O, and we're given that PQ is 10 units long, and the radius of our circle is 13. Well, it makes sense. Um, if the radius is 13, we can go ahead and draw in our radius. And I'm going to draw it to one of the points. It doesn't matter which one. And I'm also going to, we want to find the distance of the chord from the center of the circle. Well, the distance of the chord is going to be the distance, the length of the perpendicular segment from the center of the circle to the chord. Okay, so distance is the length of the perpendicular segment from the center to the chord. So if it's the perpendicular segment, well, based on what we saw earlier, if it's a perpendicular segment, then it bisects the chord, which gives us a length of five on each side. And we have a right triangle here because it's the perpendicular segment. And we have ourselves a 5, 12, 13 right triangle. Our radius is the hypotenuse. So we have ourselves a 5, 12, 13. So the distance of the chord from the center of the circle is 12 units long. So we are 12 units away from the center. So there's a sample problem. You'll also be using these reasons in proofs, and we'll get some more practice on that. We'll be using these reasons in proof, the theorems, and you'll get some more practice on that when I see you in class.